Graduate Ranger School and a, uh, a member of the 101st Airborne, deployed to Afghanistan. He was, he was uh, hit by uh, sniper fire in his leg and his hip. He was very fortunate to, uh, to get the type of medical care and, and attention that are available to today's combat soldiers. He is uh, on the mat, which is great, and uh, we're pleased to have him here for, for at least this afternoon. He's welcome back at any time, obviously. But uh, let's give him a hand. How many of you guys are going in the military? None. <laughs> no. Oh, wow. Well, I'm going to go in the academy. Right, neither did I the first time. I, I had to go which academy? Oh, right on. Yeah. Uh, I didn't the first time either. I actually had to go to a, a junior college right out of Gonzaga, and then I uh, applied again. So no, don't give up. That's me on the day of graduation. Um, can't wait to get out of there because it was terrible. Um, yeah. Um, this is the last picture my wife took of me um, as we said goodbye. I'm smiling very big because I'm trying not to cry my eyes out before I had to leave her. What year was this? Is this August? 2010. This is, uh, yeah, this is August. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is a really kind of bad picture. I snapped this. This is the first time I got in a fight. Um, these are the Apaches that I called in right here flying. You can't really see, like, I, I literally snapped this as I was running. Um, but you'll see, like, guys standing up. We had just gotten in a fight, and they're running forward. Um, we're, we're trying to chase the, the Taliban out of this, uh, pretty much like a farmer's field. I, I was wearing a radio to call in the artillery, and it has a huge antenna that probably goes up to the top of the, the chalkboard, so they know right away, you know, who to shoot at. But yeah, this giant, gigantic IED that, you know, thank this little things like angels on our shoulder, like that it didn't. If I had been, you know, a hundred meters forward, it would have just killed us all. This one, uh, they called NDS, but it's the Afghan CIA, and he, this guy just happened to keep walking and literally goes up to this guy and just pulls him by the collar and is like, "Hey, this dude's Taliban." So we actually ended up bagging and tagging him, just throwing him a flex cost. Um, that's my sergeant. Um, this is right after we got hit. Um, the day I got hit, uh, I, I volunteered. He, he came up to me and said, hey, um, sir, I'm going on patrol, and I'm just going to collect some intel. And uh, I said, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll go with you. So I went up to my commander. I said, hey, you know, I, I want to volunteer for this patrol. Can I go out? And he kind of looked at me. He's like, I don't really want you going out today, but okay. We were walking and we were just going to, up to every shop and getting their name, you know, what tribe they're from, if they're married, you know, so on, just everything about it. It's almost like a census. And uh, we went to one shop that we found out later was actually not really a shop, it was just the Taliban's, like how they're keeping eyes on the people. And it was, there was three shops and they all had the exact same. It was like if you saw this room and a room right next to it that looks just like this room. Like everything hanging up, so we knew something was wrong right away. Um, There's three. The shop owners were three young males, which was a little bit out of the ordinary because they're usually a little older, and they, they looked, you know, our age, um, with beards, and they had uh, sneakers on, which is unusual for that part of the country because they always wear sandals. Sneakers are, you know, you can shoot a weapon, drop it, and run away very quickly compared to flip flops. Um, so we knew something was wrong right right away. We started talking to them and. Uh, one of my soldiers said, hey, sir, you know, this mofo speaks English. And he was talking to a guy that was walking down the street. And it was, I looked at him, and it was the end of Ramadan, where they fast all month. And this guy was fat. So, like, you know, something's not right here. He's obviously a Taliban rig leader. So I went up around by the collar, said, you know, come here. I said, you speak English? And he's like, yes, I'm a teacher down at the school in Yaya Kel, which... I knew it was a lie because we knew the teachers. Um, he had nice, like, gold rings on, gold watch, and was very well dressed. For you've seen the other people not very well dressed. He uh, just pretty much, you know, started talking in English and started like kind of mocking us. But my interpreter didn't pick it up. Like I said, he couldn't pick up sarcasm in English. So he's saying like, "Hey, I want to help Americans. I want to be an American interpreter." And he would say that in English to us, and then he would scream it in Pashtun. 
and the three shop owners were laughing, so it was obvious that he was mocking us. Um, but he pretty much made a cell phone call. He walked away. You know, he didn't have a weapon or anything, so we couldn't detain him. So he came back and uh, he came up, shook my hands, patted me on the shoulder, said goodbye. He came up to my sergeant, this guy right here, said goodbye, hopped on his bike, and instantly, like I heard a shot, and I was on the ground. Um, I tried to pick up my rifle to uh, shoot him, and I got hit again, and I heard him start to scream, and it was actually the round that went under his arm, and it hit me, and then he was hit once more in his tricep, and then in the leg, he kept trying to move to get out of the way, and I just decided to play dead. But, uh, so yeah, they pretty much evac this the first round, um, you know, pretty much like Mr. O'Perry says, shattered my femur, and then the uh, second, uh, destroyed my iliac artery, which is, uh, if you've seen Black Hawk Down, uh, that guy has his artery destroyed, it was the artery just above that. So that's us, we're at the MASH, um, they call it FS4, surgical teams, now it's a MASH, and uh, he's right here, if you see this table right here, I'm sitting on that, they weren't so sure I was going to make it, so they didn't want to take any pictures of me. Um, this is me and Bagram. Uh, with Brigadier General Townsend, he's a Deputy uh, Division Commander, 101st Airborne, and uh, he's pre just presenting with my Purple Heart. I was completely out of it. Uh, just morphine, like kind of woke up. You kind of imagine waking up, being a 25-year-old guy who runs every day, is very active, and just seeing your body like completely just broken. It's like terrible. Um, this is a uh, little, I think Father, you come, was it like the day after or something? Secretary Gates came and visited me, he's Secretary of Defense, and my wife, he was probably one of the coolest dudes I've ever met. He gave me his cell phone number and stuff. He's an awesome guy. They did a huge bypass surgery on me. So. Oh <laughs> and that's pretty much it. You guys have any questions or anything? Yeah, what's up? Dude? So, um, when you got, when you and your buddy got the hit, like what happened from there? Were there other people out with you, or was it just you? Um, have you seen Saving Private Ryan? Yeah. yeah. Remember when Caparzo gets hit in the ring, he's playing with the kids, and he gets <coughs> in the ring for him? It's almost exact, like his, some of the stuff is like straight out of the movies. I got hit, um, and no one wanted to move because there's a sniper, so everyone's scared to death. Uh -huh. Like, it, like, very scary. Um, and he was good too, because. <laughs> I'd show you, but it'd be, you know, indecent exposure. But on my butt, there's like a round here, wow. and there's a round here. And I was on the ground, so he's very, he's, wow. he's good. Uh, they said he's from Chechnya, actually. Uh, so they got him? Oh, yeah, they, my boys killed him about a week later. They called me at 2 a.m., like, get up. We killed your guy. So, um, but yeah, I got hit, and then one of my soldiers, who used to uh, be a bodybuilder in Juice before the war, he went up and grabbed me by the collar and pretty much like threw me behind the wall. And uh, then the medic ran over and started working on me. So, and then from there on, they just he put his knee in my wound to try to stop the bleeding, which you know, stopped enough of it to keep me alive. And then they threw me in the back of the truck. And then uh, they put me on a medevac. And did you go back to the to like your cop? Yeah, I went back to the cop. Um, they put me in the aid station. Uh, real quick, which is just like almost like a first aid thing, and threw me in a casualty blanket. And it's like, I mean, I, I really do believe in like some type of divine intervention or something because when I got back, the birds were on the like the medevac was on the ground waiting for me, which is unheard of. Usually it takes like 30, 40 minutes for a medevac to uh, land, and it was right there waiting for me. So it's just these little things that kind of added up, like. Like, wow, no, I'm alive.